And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. Well, this week's show deals with the controversial issue known as right to work. And let me quickly introduce one of Oklahoma's top legal experts and my co-host, Kent Myers. Good to see you again. Mick, good to see you again. Uh, I want to make a little diversion here okay. from our controversial subject to something that isn't controversial. I want to talk uh, about something, one aspect of this show that is really unique. We have an opportunity here at our commercial breaks, or what are typically commercial breaks, to show uh, public service announcements for very fine organizations. We have organizations in this community that are worthy of uh, support, worthy of learning about, and many of them will be shown today and in our other verdict shows, and we're really proud of that. So I'm asking you, when it's time to go get a cup of coffee on a break, don't do it. Stay and learn about artwork. Learn about uh, Lawyers for Children. Learn about the programs that the Department of Human Services has to help children. We're really pleased that we can offer that, in addition to the, uh, the lively debate that I hope we'll, well, I know we'll have today, considering the subject and the participants. You know, what we look for when we choose show topic is what's topical, what's perhaps controversial, and boy, did we hit it today. We did. This topic today, right to work, is what I would like to call the energizer bunny of <laughs> Oklahoma topics. It never quits. It just keeps going and going and going. Let me ask you a question. Where were you in May of 1964? Well, I was five years old. I suppose I would have been in uh, kindergarten or grade school. Well, uh, I was, I'm sorry to say, I guess, or happy to say, <laughs> I was practicing law. And uh, in the May of 1964, this issue was voted on by the people of the state of Oklahoma. Mm. We'll get into that more uh, as we go along today. But it's interesting that it's still today, some 37 years later, a hot topic. It's a topic about which people have uh, wildly differing views. Some people say it is absolutely essential to adopt right to work or the doors will close in Oklahoma. Others say it really doesn't make any difference whether we have it or not, nothing's going to change. And another group uh, will say, it's evil. In fact, one of our guests today has said that. It's evil. It is a bad thing for Oklahoma. Uh, how uh, one issue can generate such uh, diverse opinions is, is really fascinating. And we'll try to find out today why that's about. One final comment I want to make. This is probably, of the issues that we talk about, one of the least understood and most mm -hmm. misunderstood issues. OU and the University of Oklahoma and uh, the Daily Oklahoman sponsored a poll a year ago and came to the conclusion that right to work was one of the least understood issues uh, of those that Oklahomans have to deal with on a daily basis. There's a lot of confusion about what right to work is and what it isn't. And I hope today we'll find out uh, the answers to some of these questions so that you will have uh, a basis for coming to what your verdict may be. Senator Gene Stipe, Senator Mike Fair will both be joining us. It's an emotional issue, right to work, and it should be a lively discussion right here on The Verdict. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and we're ready to discuss the issue of right to work. Kent, why don't you introduce our guest today? Yeah, we've got wonderful guests today, two of the most knowledgeable people in, the, in Oklahoma about this. We have a new author and a longtime senator and a Democrat from McAllister, lawyer, Senator Gene Stipe. Uh, Gene, you've uh, authored The Gathering of Heroes. Uh, a book about which I've heard a lot, and uh, I'm sure it will be interesting reading for all of our guests and, uh, and our viewers. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having us. We also have Senator Mike Fair, the president of Oklahomans for Right to Work. Senator Fair has been uh, in the legislature for many years, both in the House and in the Senate, has been deeply involved in Right to Work, is an Oklahoma City businessman, and uh, Senator, we're really pleased to have you here. Thank you. Let's uh, start out. I've got a graphic that uh, shows Oklahoma Senate Joint Resolution Number 1. Uh, this measure bans any new employment contract that requires employees <coughs> to resign from or belong to a union, pay union dues, or make other payments to a union. Senator Fair, let me start with you. Is that a, a fair summary of what Oklahoma Senate Joint Resolution does? That's, <clears throat> that's what it does. It makes it illegal to uh, require a person to uh, have to pay 
union dues or payments in lieu of union dues in order to hold a job. Well, do we have that happening today? Are, are people uh, having to do that today to hold a job in Oklahoma? You, yes, in some instances where you you have a union contract that uh, pre requires a person from to join the union within a given length of time. Normally, it's the way they do it, but it you know every contract could vary from from business to business where they have such contracts. Senator Stipe, why is right to work so controversial? It's a case of fraudulent terminology, denying. Uh, workers, the right to contract is not fair and, and never has been recognized as fair play in America. It's un-American. You'd say we already have right to work in Absolutely. Oklahoma. Everybody has a right to work and, and what they're doing, they're denying working people the right to contract, which is wrong. Well, let me ask uh, by looking at another graphic. Uh, we have the states shown here on this graphic that have right to work and some that, uh, and those that do not have it. The ones in uh, white do not have right to work, including Oklahoma. And there's a pattern of the West Coast and the Midwest and Northeast that do not have right to work. And then the middle of the country and the Southeast seem to uh, have right to work. Senator Fair, what, can, what conclusions, if any, do you draw from that kind of a geographical pattern? When the uh, act was passed that allowed the states to <clears throat> pass right to work laws, uh, the areas now that don't tend to have right to work tended to be the more unionized states to begin with. So there was a you know, greater force in those states than there were in the southern states and the, the states running from here to North Dakota, I guess. Well, uh, two of our most populous states don't have right to work, Senator Stipe, California and, uh, and New York. Uh, do you draw any conclusions from that? New York's the greatest city in the world, and California is the largest state in the world, and they got 10 percent of the world economy. And that tells you that right to work isn't needed. Well, Senator Fair, let me ask you this. Uh, 35 years ago, 19 of those 21 states had passed right to work. So in the past 35 years, we've just added two states. Why has right to work been so slow to progress? from the initial uh, 19 states that passed it? The uh, opponents to right to work became more skilled at, at blocking passage of the effort both in the uh, uh, referendum or vote of the people process and through the legislatures. And uh, uh, part of it, again, the states that are remaining tended to be the states where they were more entrenched to begin with. Uh, uh, we've tried here I, st I started pushing it again in 1986, 85 actually, and have pushed almost continuously since then. And it's sometimes just a matter of uh, having the uh, people become acclimated with the issue. It is a tough issue to understand. Uh, I've had lawyers in Nichols Hill say, hey, what is this right to work thing? I've been, you know, somebody that should know and they've been successful or they don't live there. Senator Fair, this <laughs> seems to be an issue that's, that's almost drawn down party lines. And I know the current legislative issue is whether or not it should go to the vote of the people. But if the legislators themselves voted on how they felt about the issue, how many would cross party lines, in your opinion? Well, of course, we had uh, 31 out of the 48 senators voted to send it to a vote of the people. And right, but that's not the same thing yeah. as, as how if they If we feel had about a pure, straight-up and down vote on right to work, uh, it would be probably just short of a majority. So, several of the members have been saying for years to avoid the issue. They've been sa taking the position, well, it ought to go to, to a vote of the people. Mm -hmm. And when the governor, uh, Keating, called the uh, state of the state before this most recent one, all right, let's take you up on that. Let's send it to a vote of the people. It changed, changed the game. And all of a sudden, that's why there's been so much pressure on, on people who have not supported it in the past to get on board. Senator Stop, how many do you think would cross party lines if, if they were uh, called upon to vote? Not very many. You think it's very pretty few. much a Republican-Democrat split? It is, very definitely. Well, there has been a suggestion made, Senator Stipe, that to adopt right to work might very well result in lower <laughs> worker wages in Oklahoma than we have today. Uh, do you see that as a, as a real concern? Absolutely. The best payrolls in Oklahoma are those that have strong unions, like uh, General Motors. And no one wants to run General Motors off because they pay decent wages. People can make a living. They can send their children to school. 
and they don't want the industries that uh, pay the minimum wage that right to work brings, the kind they have in Mississippi and the kind they have in the North Dakota and South Dakota. People can't make a living. Well, Senator Fair, what hey, do you say? Oh, we go just ahead. step right there. Let's hold that thought, and we'll take a short break and get back. Senator Gene Stipe, Senator Mike Fair, Kent Myers, and myself, we're discussing right to work. What's your verdict? And we're discussing right to work. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent, where are we here? Well, we were talking about some of the major issues uh, that surround right to work, and I want to jump right into those so that we cover as many of them as we can on our show. Uh, Senator Stipe, I'd like to talk to you about the free rider argument. I always thought that a free rider was somebody that jumped on a bus and didn't put in tokens <laughs> and got to ride without paying. Uh, they say that there's some free rider uh, possibilities here and right to work. What can you tell us about that? Before I get into that, Senator Fair, we ought to acknowledge the outstanding moderators we have here. You know, Mick Cornett's got to be quite a, quite a politician. Can't you might join him sometime? <laughs> oh, I've got, I'm surrounded well, by three elected officials. I don't go. think I can well, do it. We're glad to have him, him in the tribe. The free riders are those who want the benefits of the union and don't want to pay dues. It's kind of like the folks that come to church and don't put any money in the plate. And that's that's the example that we see most often. They, they'll they come and complain about what the preacher does and how the church services are conducted, but they don't financially support it. And that's what a free rider is. He's a guy that likes to gripe all the time and doesn't contribute. Senator Fair? Well, before I respond to that, uh, just before the break, I was supposed to respond to Senator Stipes on the uh, saying that we would make lesser wages. Well, go right and ahead. And we never got a chance to well, get Well, go there. right ahead. Uh, on, the, on the salary thing, that the easiest answer to that is look at Texas, look at Kansas, even look at Arkansas, the map you showed a while ago. Texas has had right to work since 1947. Kansas has had right to work since 1957. In both cases, the average per capita income is 15% higher than the average per capita income in Oklahoma. So, you know, the argument that somehow right to work is going to make people lose benefits or make less money is just not accurate. It's, it's a bogus argument. Even the, the state to our east, which covers almost all of our eastern border, Arkansas, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you wanted to make cash in Arkansas, you either bootlegged or you plucked turkeys around Thanksgiving time. Well, they have a new cash way to make cash over there, and it's called industry, and a lot of it light and clean industry. And uh, what has happened, a state that was so far behind us 20, 30 years ago, projected by the Oklahoma Labor Department from statistics from the, Oklahoma, from the U.S. Commerce Department, Arkansas, will, at the current rate of growth, will probably pass Oklahoma this year on average per capita income. Oh, we're at right now, we're 43rd in the nation and Arkansas is one or two down, but they're growing faster in per capita income than we are. So the argument that it means loss of benefits or, or less money is just not accurate. If you look at Texas, go to Dallas, go to Sherman, uh, look at that strip along the uh, western border of Arkansas, and you're going to find the prosperity compared to, as in the case of Durant, 20, 30 miles from Sherman. And it's day and night, and, and what's the difference? We drink the same water, we breathe the same air. What about the free rider argument? Uh, well, the free rider thing was placed in the National Labor Relations Act at the request of the unions. And you have to picture, let's pretend we have a union shop and keep it small. Say there's 10 employees and they didn't cover all the employees. One is able to be a, a, a merit employee. And let's say that those others, they get paid all the same thing, but that merit employee is not covered by the negotiations. Now, you think he might work a little bit harder. He might empty his own wastebasket when it gets so full it gets in the way of his production. 
Do you think maybe when Joe over there gets a little bit behind on production and he's caught up, he might go help Joe out? And it was that kind of practice, that extra effort from the merit employee that the unions wanted to block when they passed the federal law requiring that that union cover everybody in there. It's not a free rider that anyone's asked for. I don't know anyone that, that would like to be out of the union that uh, feels like they're a free rider. They would like to work on their own merit and be able to, to negotiate and determine the wage they make by the job that they do. There's been another suggestion uh, widely talked about, I don't know how valid it is, Senator Stipe, that right to work will not only bring about lower wages but poorer working conditions. Absolutely, it does. Any place that is not a union, you'll see the poor work condition and lower pay. The unions are strong and for the working people, and they bring benefits to them. Look at Oklahoma City. Look at the police department, the firemen. They're the best paid, as well paid as any in the nation. Look at the rest of Oklahoma City. They're way below the national average. So the unions deliver for their membership, and that's why they're wanting to outlaw them. They want to outlaw the union contract. Let me they interject low there. wages. And yes, let's, let's uh, before we wind up this segment, let's yeah. get into a final comment from each yeah. of our guests. And Senator Fair, let's start with you. What's your best case for right to work? Well, first I'm going to finish this thought. <laughs> the, the firefighters and police officers do have right to work. They are not required to join their union. They, under the law, they can't be required to join their union. They do it. The ones that join it, join it by choice because they, they feel like the union's doing them a good job. That's because their union's doing a good job, yeah. as, as would you and I. Yeah, but you I think, I think the easiest answer would be to look at Texas, look at Kansas, look at the states we're competing with, the, the look at who's supporting right to work, the state chamber, the Oklahoma City, Tulsa, most all of your local chambers who are in the business of recruiting jobs and industry for the state say we need it. And I found that when I travel the state and talk to job recruiters, they say we need it to compete. Look at Texas, they're more prosperous, Kansas more prosperous, Arkansas growing faster in per capita income. Uh, you know, we, what's the argument for the other side except they want those continued dues without earning by necessarily doing the good job to well, get them? Let's find out. Let, Senator Stipe, how would you close well, this out for us? One thing that's held Oklahoma back is low government wages. And you know who's responsible for that? The, the conservatives that dominate Oklahoma politics. If we paid our teachers and our state employees the national average all of a sudden, our average per capita income would be up to the national average. That's why we're below the average, is we, we, we uh, don't pay our public employees like we should. And we, we, we ought to be ashamed of that, because education deserves the best, and the best deserves the best pay, and we ought to be paying them. And if we did that, we'd be up to the national average, and, and these naysayers that pointed Oklahoma as something bad would be bragging on us, maybe. <laughs> They'd still want right to work, though, because they want cheap wages and bad working conditions. That's Well, at the risk of having to give someone the final word, I think we'll sure. call it stop there. Well, thanks to Senator Stipe, Senator Fair. Uh, you've heard a lot. All right. We've got to wrap it up. We'll be right back. Kent and I will have a final word after this. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Well, where are we here to wrap this one up in a minute or so? Well, it's kind of hard to wrap up what these two gentlemen have, uh, have torn all apart and left on the <laughs> table here. Uh, uh, is it time for right to work? That's really the question. Uh, it's a question that people will have to answer. Uh, we don't know when. It may be uh, this year. It may be next. Uh, the people did vote on this in 1964, and I have a graphic I'd like to show you that shows the vote. Uh, it was, at least in my uh, estimation, surprisingly close mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, no prevailing 51.7 to yes 48.3. That's 35 years ago, 37 years ago. It's been quite a while. Uh, just what the people of Oklahoma will do now, I don't know. How they have changed, how their perspectives have changed, it's hard to tell. But it's possible that this is going to go to a vote of the people and will not be determined by our legislature. It, it is. 
only going to go to a vote of the people if the House of Representatives votes it out, which is, is expected to do. Uh, it could go as early as uh, this summer to a vote of the people. It could uh, be uh, delayed until the general election in 2002. I don't know how that favors one side over the other. That's beyond my expertise. But I think the people will vote on it. I think the people will have a chance to have their say, and uh, they will have a chance to render their verdict. So I want our voters now, or our voters and, and viewers, uh, to think about what they've heard today and decide what's your verdict. Well, Kent, thanks again for being with us today. It's, uh, I always enjoy these times you and I share. Thanks again to our guests also, State Senators Gene Stipe and Mike Fair. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict.